When you go to the store, do you leave it? When you go to the store, man, you leave your door unlocked. You, you say no. Why do you lock your door when you go to the store? You don't want nobody to steal nothing out of your car. You understand? Read that again. North thieves! Oh what? North thieves! Guess what? Them thieves that come to take things that don't belong to them out of your car? You understand? God says that they will be judged for that. Come on. North covetous! No what? North covetous! No what? North covetous! North covetous! Covetous people! Covetous is the root of all sin. Guess what? If you lust after another man's wife, what spirit are you dealing with? Covetous. When you sell drugs to your own people on these corners over here by McDonald's and the gas station, right on y'all know what I'm talking about. When they sell drugs right over here, the brothers standing on the corners, guess what spirit they got on them? Covetousness. Because it's something that they want that they're willing to break God's laws to get. Alright? When you have that spirit on you, alright? That's called covetousness. That's what that is. When we say, you know what? God says celebrate the Passover. God says celebrate tabernacles. God says I need to celebrate the new moon. Alright? We say, ah, uh, I think I like birthdays better. You know why? Because we got a spirit of covetousness on us. We would rather have something that we see that we like opposed to what God said. Remember like you said, train up a child in the way that he should go? Right? God trained us with his laws. But when we reject his laws, we say, now I'm going to follow after all the other nations around me. Alright? That's when we learn Christmas. That's when we learn Thanksgiving. Right? That's when we learn July 4th. That has nothing to do with our people. We were in slavery during the time of July 4th. But every every uh, July 4th weekend, what do we do? We put the firecrackers up in the sky. You know what I'm talking about? We throw them on the ground. You got grandkids, right? They throw them on the ground. You know what I'm talking about, right? We, we go in the backyard. What we do in the backyard? We barbecue. We like the grill. We do all of that. But guess what? That's not our custom. That's not our custom. That's not our custom. You know what spirit you're dealing with? When you say, yeah, I'm going to exchange what God gave me for that. That's the spirit of idolatry. You also have the spirit of covetousness on you because you're lusting after something that God said you shouldn't have. All right? We got to rule our spirits if we want to get the kingdom of God. We can't continue to live however we want to live and expect to be rewarded when we die. That's falsehood. That's foolishness. You understand? That doesn't exist. Those are white man lies. That's what they're called. You understand? We don't read that in this black Bible for these black people. You understand? Who God calls the Israelites. You don't read that in here. You don't read it anywhere. We were taught that by our oppressors. The same ones that brought us in chains on slave ships. You understand? That's when we learn birthdays. That's when we learn to eat chitlins. That's when we learn to eat crab, shrimp, lobster. That's when we learn to eat the oxtail. Oh, we don't even know the part of the ox. We eat the tail. We eat the chitlins. The stuff that hold the, the, the y'all know what I'm talking about. That's what we eat. Where did we learn that at? We learned that in slavery. You understand? We don't read that in this Bible. That's called a spirit of idolatry. When you exchange what God gave you that's so precious, all right, for, for, for what the, because now we got a choice. You can't say, oh, I was in slavery, they forced this on me. Yes, they did. But guess what? Nobody's forcing it on you anymore. We go to the store, we give them our hard-earned money for it. That's what we do. We give them our hard-earned money for trash, for abominations. Come on. North thieves, no what? North thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Hey, you hear that? Did you hear that, my brother right here? Did you hear that? Read that again. Listen good. No drunkards, no what? No drunkards. You can't be out here getting drunk, my man. At him right there with the red shirt on. Can't be out here being drunk. Hear what the Bible say? Read it again. No what? No drunkards. No what? No drunkards. You got something to drink today? All right, all day, every day. You can't be out here like that. You understand? Why? Because God says, if you out here drunk, you're not going to get the kingdom of heaven. We want you to get the kingdom of heaven, my brother. We want you to get the kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. You can drink wine, but you shouldn't wake up early in the morning drinking. You shouldn't wake up early in the morning. You can't get your day started without drinking. All right? You can't. You shouldn't do that. All right? You shouldn't. You sh say it again. All right, well, when you do drink, you got to make sure that you don't have too much to the point where now your judgment is inclined. Now you can't think right. Now you can't get home. Now you want to go on your phone and you want to call one of them three ex-wives that you got. You understand the ones that you cut off, you ain't supposed to deal with, you get drunk. Now you start thinking about them. You don't want to drink that much. You understand what I'm saying? You don't want to drink that much, all right? Come on. 
No revellers. No what? No revellers. No revellers. Come on. No extortioners. No what? No extortioners. Cause we be cheating people out of money all the time. All the time. We can't trust nobody. When the last time somebody came to you with a scam? It probably was one of your own people. Right. That's called extortion. God says, when you deal like that, he's going to judge you and you're not going to get the kingdom. Come on. So, inherit the kingdom of God. None of those people are going to get the kingdom of God. Right. That's what God says. Who want to get the kingdom of God? Raise your hand. You want to get the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. I'm going to show you how to get the kingdom of God. The Bible's going to show you how to get the kingdom of God. All right? All you got to do is real easy. You see this Bible? Very simple. The white man has made our access to the kingdom very, very, very difficult. You understand? Christianity is very, very, very difficult. But this Bible is very simple book. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, what came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So someone came to Christ and said, What good thing can I do that I may get the kingdom? Somebody just like you. Somebody just like you. Maybe they lived a life of extorting people, of stealing from people, a life of adultery, a life of drinking, coming from a background of all different types of sins. All different types of abominations, what the Bible calls it, right? This man came to Christ and said, look, how do I get the kingdom? How does a man like me, somebody that looked like me, somebody that's done the things that I've done, how do I get the kingdom? Listen to what Christ tells him. Come on. And he said it to him, what callest thou me good? He said, wait, why are you calling me good? You understand? This is the black Messiah that's right. that he's talking to. But his humility says, wait, why are you calling me good? The only one good is the most high. That's what it's going to say. His father. What does that tell you? That they're two separate beings. Lies that we have been taught is that they're the same. All right? The Trinity. That's a lie. The father, the son. No. No. The father is over the son. Just like you're over your child. Right? There's no equality with the father and the son. This is what Christ is showing. This is what he's teaching this man right here, right now. Why do you think he's telling him this? Because in these last days, in our minds, we would have that doctrine. And we would have to have it pulled down. We can't think like that no more. We can't think that Christ was the father and he was the son. And it was kind of confused and he was kind of like an amazing man on earth who had no sin. But that's not like me because I have evil thoughts. Christ didn't have no evil thoughts. Yes, he did. He did have evil thoughts. He, he, he suffered. He got hungry. He was just like you. You understand? He lusted. He had all of that stuff. That's why now we can look at his example and follow it. Come on. And he said it to him, What callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you want to get the kingdom of God, if you want to enter into life, if you want to live forever, you understand? If you want life after death, because all of us is going to die one day, unless Christ return and we're still living, then we'll, be, we'll, we'll, have, we'll get our powers, we'll go to the chariots at that point in time. But until then, we all going to die. That's the sentence we got. It is what it is. We all going to die. But if you want to live after death, listen to what Christ says. Come on. Keep the commandments. What does he say? Keep the commandments. What does he say? Keep the commandments. You got to keep God's commandments. Right. But many of us, like we spoke of, are not learning God's commandments in our household. We're not learning God's commandments. You understand? Give me Psalms chapter 81 verse 3. I'm going to show you one of God's commandments. It's coming up. Wednesday night at sundown. This Wednesday at sundown. When you look up in the sky, you're going to see a big full moon. What's the full moon? What's that mean? A new, like, very good. What type of season? Help me out. A new spiritual season. All right? Well, help me understand what that means for today. All right, we're going to read it for you. Psalms chapter 81, verse 3. The book of Psalms chapter 81, verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the what? In the new moon. In the what? In the new moon. The word month comes from moon. Right? So what's happening every time you see a big new moon in the sky? It's a new month. Right. Did you learn that in school? Why not? They don't fly. Because that's an Israelite custom. And if you were to learn that, you would be keeping more of God's commandments. You understand? That's to help bring your heritage back to you. 
All right, this is a part of your heritage. Right. If they were to teach you that in school, guess what? They would have to teach you that they took that away from you. That's right. Right? The only way they, they the only way they can teach that to you now is to teach that they took it away from you at some point. You understand? That's why it's not being taught in school. Read it again. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the new moon. You ever celebrated the new moon? You ever celebrated the new moon? No, most of us haven't. Right? I didn't start celebrating the new moon until I started reading this Bible and doing what it said to do for real. Right. That's when I started to, to keep the new moon. Come on. In the time appointed. Guess what? The new moon, when you look in the sky, it's a big full moon. God says that that's an appointed time. That means that this is a special time. It's not like a regular day. Right. All right? Come on. See, we associate it with werewolves and all that stuff we see on the movies and stuff like that. Right? That's not what it is. God says it's an appointed time for the Israelites, right. for black people, for Native Americans, for Hispanics, so-called. That's a special time for us. It's our day, created for us. Come on. On our solemn feast day. You know, on everybody's solemn feast day. On our... You hear what the Bible just said? It said on, that's a possessive pronoun. Right. Possessive. That means it's for you. It's for you. It's for me. It's for him. It's not for everybody. That's it's right. for our. It's our. You understand? Come on. For this was a statue for Israel. For who? For Israel. For who? For Israel. It's not everybody's feast day. When you see the big moon in the sky, that represents the feast day God created for you. For you. You know you're not supposed to be working that day. You're supposed to take off. Right? You're not supposed to be doing no work. You ain't supposed to go to the store and buy nothing. Matter of fact, whoever working at the store is supposed to take off. Right? We all supposed to get together. We're supposed to feast. We're supposed to eat. We're supposed to drink. We're supposed to listen to music. Go through the scriptures. You understand? Know get built up. Not think about this captivity, this hell that we live in. Right. Not think about none of that stuff. You're supposed to do that once a month. Every month you see a big new moon. You should be preparing yourself. As the month progresses, right? You should see, oh wow, it's getting bigger. It's almost there. I think tomorrow or the next day it's going to be a big full moon. Right. right? The closer you get to that big full moon, the closer that you get to rest. Right. That's what you should be thinking about. I ain't going to work. You like working? Huh? Sometimes. All right. Oh, no, I'm talking about you like going to, to, to go to labor, to go to work in order to feed your family and pay taxes to the white man. Everybody, you love that, right? You hate that, right? So guess what? Every time you see the new moon, you're supposed to be thinking about taking off of that. I'm supposed to take rest. I'm supposed to be refreshed. I get some time off of this, right? See, during slavery, they gave us Sunday. And on Sunday, we didn't have to be in the fields picking cotton and doing all of that stuff, right? You know what we had to do? We had to go to church. But not the same church they went to. We had to go to a different one because they didn't want us around them. You know what I'm talking about? Right. But guess what? We got to rest on Sunday. On Sunday, we got to rest. That's not the rest the Bible tells us. God says to rest on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. See, we got to start with God's laws. You know what I'm talking about? Do you keep the Sabbath day? We can, we can get ready to go into the Sabbath day. Give me Exodus chapter 20. We just spoke about the new moon. We're getting ready to go to the Sabbath day. Now, the Sabbath day is not the first day of the week. When you take your calendar out, you look at it. Which one comes up first? Sunday comes up first, right? So that tells you that it's what day of the week? It's, it's the first day. Sunday is what day of the week? The first or the last? It's the first day of the week. Listen to what God says. Read what you got. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. God says remember the Sabbath day. Come on. To keep it holy. We got to do what? To keep it holy. We got to keep the Sabbath day holy. Give me Genesis chapter 2. Start at verse 1, read down to verse 3. All right? We're reading about what? The Sabbath day. What did God do on day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4? What did God do on day Sunday? He rested? He rested on, on Sunday? On day 7. What did he do on day 1? He came from the heaven and he moved the earth. What did he do on day 2? The same thing. Day 3. The same thing. Day 4. The same thing. Day 5. So why would we thought... That Sunday is a holy day. We need to go to church on Sunday. Go to one of these buildings on Sunday. Why was we taught that? It don't make sense. Sunday's the first day of the week. Sunday's the first day of the week. Read verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 1. Come on. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day. All that was done on day 1 through day 6. What did God do on the seventh day? God ended his work. He did what? Ended his work. He stopped working on the seventh day. Did you hear what the Bible said? Not the first day. On what day? The seventh day. What day is the seventh day? Saturday. That's the day we should be coming together. That's another day of rest you have.
and his men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.